All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, we're gonna tie up probably one of my favorite winter fly patterns. You read the title, it's a buckskin. Works really well in off color conditions, works really well in the winter. Uh, it's a staple in most of our boxes here on the San Juan. Of course, we're tying this with actual buckskin. So this actually comes in a patch and I cut this into strips and they're about three to four millimeters thick. And I really like this sort of reddish, uh, orange brownish color and uh, you could also buy it in the tan shade and color it with a marker i usually find that this one catches more fish for me uh, looks a little bit more natural especially when it gets wet and then after that we are going to tie um, a chamois leech so a buckskin and a chamois are kind of two different things because they call for different material this is a chamois towel you can buy this at your local auto parts store for like ten dollars and the main difference between this and the buckskin is it's a lot thinner. This will work a lot better uh, if you're trying to get a little bit more movement, but still sort of maintain that wormy profile. Uh, so we'll tie this second, we'll start with the buckskin. And like I was saying, this is one of my favorite uh, patterns, not just because it catches a billion fish, but also because it's uh, quick and easy. It's the, uh, the fast food of fly tying if you will the the french fry start this off with a little bit of red utc typically that's standard on buckskins uh, if you don't use red you won't catch anything I'll wrap it just behind the eye I'll go ahead trim that off so easy to tie these things and they work so well i'm going to wrap back behind where the barb would be and then i'm going to go ahead and grab a strip of buckskin so it doesn't really matter which side you put up uh, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hit this with a marker but for me I usually like to put the skin side up so we'll go ahead and we'll tie this in I like to leave about an inch sticking out from the back uh, that looks like about an inch to me so I'm gonna grab my thread wrap over and I'm not gonna pull too tight on the first turn I'm gonna increase the amount I'm pulling down on it with each turn will do probably about six. Okay, it's looking good. I'll pull this top piece back and then I'll make a few wraps, kind of pushing that thread uh, rearward. And that's just gonna sort of stop it from spinning a whole bunch on us. Advance my thread forward towards the eye. Since the fish are gonna love this fly so much, I like to put a little bit of Loctite on there. Like I said, it's also gonna keep it from spinning off on you. So we'll just put a little dab in there, right in the middle. We're all lock, locked up now. So I'm gonna make some wraps behind the eye and slowly increase tension that we're going to put on it about six wraps or so then go ahead and pull this piece back again i'm going to make a couple wraps behind the eye pushing that thread rearward i grab my whip finish tool and we'll do probably a three turn whip finish trim it up I like to trim the top just a bit shorter than the rear. And I also like to trim them at an angle uh, just to sort of maintain that little bit of a wormy profile. Heavy duty scissors, cause this can be tough to cut through. So you can see it has like sort of a little slant in there. I'm just gonna do the same thing in the back, except I'm not gonna cut off as much. There you have it. There's your buckskin. A lot of worms very rarely are they just one um, singular color so what I like to do is color one side of it something different doesn't really matter you can color it whatever you want black red um, maroon In this case I'm gonna go ahead and use a red marker I'm just gonna take this off and I'll stick my finger underneath and cover the rear went ahead and I got this thing wet and you can see very similar to a uh, aquatic worm 
Very nice color, that red on the top kind of uh, blends in once it hits the water. Super wormy looking. And like I was saying, the main difference between the two, uh, between the buckskin and the chamois, is the chamois is going to be a little on the thinner side. So I went ahead and I cut a strip uh, pretty similar in uh, length to the other one. And the process is pretty much exactly the same. We're going to start our thread here at the top. If you're fishing some really murky water, you can tie this exactly how we tied the buckskin, but you can actually put wraps of tinsel underneath it to cover up this red thread, um, or you could use UV style thread. So uh, bear that in mind. Same process. I'm going to leave about uh, probably about an inch tag on the back. That looks good to me. Three, four, five, six. This one's gonna be a lot easier to work with than the buckskin. So I'm probably not gonna use super glue on this one. So if we roll that over the top, just kind of fold it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you could really crank a lot of these out if you sat down and did it. For pretty cheap too. Cut that, trim this to length, same process. I'm going to cut the front end a little bit shorter and add an angle. The back piece, I'll just cut that at an angle as well. You could fish it just like this. If you want to go ahead and uh, fish it without hitting it with a marker, this is how it'll look once it gets wet. You decide that you want to color it up, which is kind of what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to lightly coat one side of it. And this is actually a paint marker. You can use a Sharpie. Uh, this is just what I had on hand. If you run it underwater or once you start fishing it, that color will actually bleed through and it'll turn the whole thing, uh, whatever color marker you hit it with. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. These are two very effective flies, not just uh, effective at catching fish, but they're also very cost effective. Hope you guys like this. Let me know if this is also a staple in your fly box. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.